Hey guys, I am back out in the shop working on the CR250 once again. So what I've got going on today, I'll be replacing all the shock linkage bearings. And if you remember right, when I went to go pull apart this linkage, all the bearings fell apart and it was a complete disaster. With the help of my friends over at Pivotworks, I've got a linkage rebuild kit here. It's got all the bearings, seals, and bushings that I'll need to make this linkage brand new again. And what's cool is it doesn't require any special tools to rebuild the linkage. Here's where I'm at with the linkage right now. Two of the bearings are out, and this is what it looked like when I pulled it apart. Just a bunch of bearings and rust and dirt. Pretty nasty. Of course, the first step is going to be to push these two bearings out, as well as all these bearing races. I'll be using a vise and a couple of sockets to knock the old bearings out of the linkage. The larger socket fits on the outside diameter of the linkage, just like that. And the smaller socket goes on the inside. This is what's going to push the bearing race out of the linkage. I'm going to set up the linkage in the vise just like this, with one socket on the inside making contact with the bearing race, and the other socket on the outside of the linkage. So I should be able to tighten the vise down and I'll push those bearing races right out of the linkage. And this just occurred to me, I have actually never done this before, so I'm learning just as much as you guys are. If your races are being stubborn like these ones are, you may want to apply some heat to help it out. This bearing has two races, one on each side. I pushed the one race over to the other and now it's getting a bit difficult. So I'm gonna apply some more heat to give it a hand. Well, this is pretty slick. The races are actually moving on their own just because of the heat. As long as I have pressure with the vise here, once I apply heat, the races will slide over by themselves. So if I didn't explain this earlier, what's happening is the smaller socket is pushing the races out and into the larger socket. So we've got one race out and the other one is just about there. I'm just gonna knock it out the rest of the way with a hammer. Frick, that's hot. Oh, burning my hands over here. Woo. All right, one last smash and it'll be out. All right, so that's one set of bearing races. I've got one more up here and then another set right here. It's amazing how big of a difference adding heat makes. I don't think I'd be able to push these races out without the torch. Those ones came out pretty easy. Just got one left now. All right, that's it for this piece. On to the connecting arm. It 
It looks like we've got some blind bearings on this connecting arm. So what that means is the center diameter is smaller than the diameter of the bearing. So that way I can't push the bearings all the way through like I did with the other ones. So I lied to you guys, you actually do need some special tools to pull out these bearings. I'll be using a blind bearing puller for this situation. First off, I'm gonna have to empty all the needles out of the race. All right, so I found the right size puller insert for this linkage. I'm just gonna pop it in place. And when I tighten down this bolt here, it's gonna expand. And I'll be able to attach the slide hammer to this insert and pull the bearing out of the linkage. With the linkage in the vise and the slide hammer attached, I should be able to apply some heat and yank this race right out. That was actually a lot easier than I anticipated. This slide hammer worked pretty good. The linkage is now completely bare. Just gonna give it a little cleanup before I pop in this new bearing set. I'm gonna lay out all these bearings, bushings, and seals, make sure I got everything, and then start slapping this thing back together. Looks like everything is here. Got the seven bearings, all the pins, seals, dust caps, and they even included some grease. So I am all set. So once again, I'll be using a vise and a couple of sockets to press these bearings into place. I'm gonna start with this bearing right here. Before I pop the bearing into place, I'm gonna apply some grease to the inside of the linkage. And it's also not a bad idea to apply some grease to the bearing as well. On this first part, I'm not going to need any sockets. Just going to get the bearing started and pushed all the way in until the vise bottoms out. You'll definitely want to make sure the bearing's in straight before you start cranking on the vise at all. At this point, the vise bottomed out, so I'm going to have to use a socket to push the bearing in the rest of the way. So I've got one bearing in, now I'm going to pop the other side in. One thing I didn't mention earlier is there's a rounded side and a flat side to the bearing. The flat side of the bearing is marked. You always want to go with the marked side facing out. All right, I've got both bearings pressed in till they're flush with the inside surface. Now I'm gonna set the depth. The depth on these two bearings should be six to six and a half millimeters from the outside surface of the linkage here. So I've got my handy dandy calipers here and I'm gonna measure the depth. Hopefully it's around six millimeters. We are at 5.5, so it needs to go a little bit deeper. Gonna go ahead and measure that again. We are at 6.1, so that is within the recommended range. And of course, it's always a good idea to stuff a bunch of grease inside the bearing to keep her lubed up. This is about as packed as you can get as far as grease goes. Never hurts to be on the safe side. Just gonna grease up the bushing as well 
and slide that into place. Let's see how she spins. Man, that is smooth. That's a good feeling right there. And then on this particular bearing, there's a washer that goes on each end. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without some fresh seals and dust caps. Just gonna apply a little bit of grease to the inside of the linkage before I pop in those seals. Just gonna make sure it's pressed in and straight. And I'm gonna move on to the other side. And last but not least, got some dust caps. Got one bearing out of the way, only three more to go. All right, on the second bearing, I've got both sides pressed in till they're flush. Now I'm gonna set the depth. The recommended depth on these ones is 4.4 to 4.7 millimeters. This side is just under four millimeters, so I'm gonna have to press it in just a little bit more. I'm just about at 4.4 millimeters and I'm gonna call that good. Now I'm just gonna pack the bearing with grease and pop everything together. Now it's on to the last bearing for this triangle piece. So for this one, I'm gonna press it all the way into the linkage and then center it. To center the bearing, I'm gonna use the calipers to measure the depth on each side until it's equal. On this side, we're at 1.34. And this side looks pretty close, maybe a little bit deeper. Oh, it's at 2.36. All right, one side we've got 2.11. And 1.53. Still a little bit more work. One point seven seven and one point seven five. So that is going to be close enough. The seals and dust caps on the lower shock bearing are situated a little bit differently. So the seal goes over the dust cap just like so, and then it is pressed into the linkage. So with the smaller part of the dust cap facing out. Well folks, that is it for the triangle piece. Just got a few bearings left on the connecting arm. It is time to pick the winner for the giveaway of the Scotch-Brite wheel from the previous video. Just gonna head over here to the random comment picker. Looks like we had 1,082 comments. And once I click this button, it's gonna pick a complete random comment and that comment will be the winner. All right, we've got Deegan M and he says 2002 CR125. Well, Deegan, I hope you can find a use for the Scotch-Brite wheel. I'm gonna grab your shipping address and mail that thing over to you. Congrats, dude.
Thanks for all the comments, everyone. It was really cool to see all the bikes that you guys have. Pressing the bearings into the connecting arm is gonna be pretty straightforward. There's a ridge down here inside the link, and I'm just gonna push the bearings all the way in till they meet that ridge. Alrighty guys, the linkage is now 100% back together and I am really happy with how this thing turned out. The Pivot Works bearing kit had everything I needed and the whole setup went together very smoothly. So if you guys are in need of any sort of bearing for your bike, whether that's wheel bearings or leakage bearings like the ones I just installed, or perhaps you need a shock or fork rebuild kit, definitely go check out Pivot Works. I would highly recommend them. I'll put the link to their website as the first one down in the description below. Thanks for watching the video guys. I will catch up with you all in a few days. Take care.